welcome everybody back to the Insider Galaxy Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Hernandez. As always, we got to talk about our two games that happened during the week. Yeah, that's right. We got two recaps. One, a Cali Classico, which ended up being a 3-2 at San Jose. Uh, a series sweep, I guess, or not sweep, but a series win, I guess, for the for the Cali Classico uh, this year. So we're going to talk about that, give our thoughts and opinions. And we also have our game that happened against Houston at home, which ended up being a 0-0 draw. So we're going to talk about that as well. Four points we got at, out of the six available. So, yeah, we're going to give our thoughts, our opinions, you know, all the good stuff and things like that. And uh, also, we got a lot of things to talk about off the field as well. We got some Galaxy news to talk about, players leaving, players wanting to leave, and also new additions. So we're going to talk about stuff like that. And we also have our preview against uh, St. Louis SC, which will be this Sunday at home as well. So, yeah, we I mean, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Should be a good conversation overall. And, uh, yeah, I mean, glad you're all here. And let's get this show on the road. So, yeah, uh, with me, as always, is my co-host, LA Galaxy Central. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing really good. I enjoyed last week watching the games, just chilling, and I'm happy to be here right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we got a lot, like I said, we got a lot to talk about, a lot to go deep down and uncover everything, give our thoughts. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, overall, the week was uh, interesting. We got to see some wins. We got to see a tie. And yeah, I mean, let's just get right into that one. So let's talk first about um, San Jose, uh, the Cali Classico at San Jose, the final Cali Classico of the season. Um, of course, it was a battle. Uh, Galaxy were basically dominating San Jose like the first 20, 25 minutes. Then San Jose managed to flip the script on them. They get the lead going into the half. Then afterwards, Galaxy come back. They get 3-2. Some moments where it could have tied, some moments where, you know you know decisions had to be made like it was overall an entertaining Kylie Classico like and we said that before going into that game that it was going to be interesting it was going to be intense and just have a different level of it right so yeah I mean overall that Kylie Classico was just you know it was pretty crazy but um yeah I mean let, let's start off with you man like what, what are your thoughts about it how'd you feel about the performance how'd you feel about the team give me your thoughts yeah, that was a great result. Obviously, going undefeated versus a rival this year is always great. Three games, no losses, always great to see on the road. Against a team that's been really good this year, they only lost one game at home prior to that game, so it was a very tough place to go play in this year. And Yeah, it was a great result. We started off really well. Like you said, we dominated. Then we have a mental lapse of concentration. Then we go behind, and we managed to bring ourselves back into the game. And to really see that fight back from the Galaxy was great, and now we get the bragging rights for the Cali Classico for this year. Yeah, we do. And also to mention, I forgot to mention as well, also injuries happen in that game as well. You know, Douglas Costa ends up getting a dislocated shoulder, which hopefully uh, it's not too bad. I know the the uh, the uh, result was like or like the recovery time was 10 days to maybe two weeks around there. So, you know, maybe he comes back this Sunday. We'll see. But, uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, it was an intense game. A lot of things happened. Um, I, I mean, there were some moments where we thought, hey, can we keep this lead? Can we, you know, shut, you know, get the win? away against a rival like i don't know there were some moments where i just thought like man i don't know if we're gonna get it but the galaxy managed to pull it off i mean it was pretty crazy but i mean yeah emotionally it was it was an emotional roller coaster i mean i'm pretty sure you could agree with that it was just very intense very you know all over the place if you ask me yeah that's mostly rivalry games too they're very back and forth and that's how they should be yeah i mean honestly and and you know we haven't seen this from a cali classico in a while either so it's like it's pretty crazy to think about it too it's just like Man, like this was really, it, it felt felt good. Like it felt good to watch this. I mean, it felt even better because we got the win. But I mean, I, I guess if you're talking through it but in like a neutral perspective, like, you know, it was an entertaining game and we haven't seen that from a San Jose LA Galaxy game in like who knows how long. But yeah, I mean, there was moments in that game. I mean, the Christian Espinosa who had basically almost had goal of the year where like, you know, it hit the post. Like, I mean, the post was the MVP of that game. <laughs> if you ask me, like that was insane like how that just the the, where how the ball was shot where it hit and then boom it was just like the post saved us and it was just like wow like i I didn't expect that like i I don't know it was it was very intense there was moments where i was just like like fuck are we gonna get it are we gonna do this and then boom like once the final whistle blew it was just like all right get up everybody let's celebrate or at least right now for this win you know it, it felt good like it honestly just felt good at the end of the day yeah, it was definitely a grind-up performance in the last 20 minutes. I really think we were just trying to survive out of there. And we got injuries, too, which we had no designated players on the field for the last 20 minutes. So at that point, the goal of the game was just to survive. And in the moments we needed to come up big, we made the big plays to keep the lead for us. And that was good to see on the road. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, and it's very tough to do it on the road. And and like you, you mentioned before, like the record that San Jose has at home is like it's it's great. And the fact that they've only what would you say they only like lost one game in I think in general lost one game at home like this season, right? So it's just like uh, that's insane to me. That's like when you have that much pressure going into you, and with on top of the pressure of trying to make it to the playoffs, it's just like the Galaxy delivered. They they went in there. Yeah, there was moments where they I guess you can say they mentally collapsed, but they they went back up and they, you know, it it was overall a, a good team win and a good performance in that in that matter. And that's what you need from this team in these moments is trying to get fight as much fight as hard as you can and try to get these points because it's very limited now. There's chances that we could make the push, but a win like this makes you feel at least a little hopeful for the Galaxy, and especially just before going into San Jose, which, again, that's a different discussion. But, you know, at least after that game, you're a little hopeful for the Galaxy with that performance. Yeah, and I mean, again, Tyler Boyd and Ricky Pooch, like, they scored, obviously, in front of 82,000 versus LAFC at this game again when we needed them. They both delivered. So that's very good that these players that are very passionate about the club, some of our best players, are able to rise to these games again for both rivals. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's crazy because, like, uh, the you know, same thing for San Jose. Their their stars showed up. They they came to play. They knew what how important this game was, and it, it was just like the Stanford game. You know, it's just like both teams knew what was at stake, and you know, they both gave it their hearts out. Which also another thing too it is interesting how like you know before San Jose when when on our three zero win against Chicago, you had a Tyler Boyd goal, you had a Ricky Puj goal. And then you had a striker goal. Same thing happened in San Jose, except the fact is they scored two on you. So, which again, those the, the, the rivalry games are going to be. But that was kind of interesting, though, seeing that like I guess the same thing happened that game. So, I don't know, pretty interesting. But um, yeah, I mean, overall, just like that game was just uh, intense. You got to appreciate it. Your stars showed up. The guys who maybe don't have the spotlight, you know, showed up as well. Just everybody just knew what was what was that. You know, they knew what the, they had to do their job. They knew that they had to just get it going. So I, I'm happy for that win. I'm happy with the mentality, I guess. And the, um, what's the word I'm, I'm trying to look for? Um, fuck, I can't even think of the word right now. But the point is they fought back and, and they, you know, they got the three points. And that's something good. You ha- That's something uh, you should be proud of, of this team. For sure. And you get to go unbeaten in Cali Classic in three games this season. So you basically, for the second time in three years, we get to win the season series. Like in 2021, we played San Jose three times. We beat them twice and lost once. And this year, another three-game season series, we beat them two times and tied once. So I think Greg Vanny has really installed the importance to Cali Classico to this team, which under other under other managers i don't think the cali classico is really as important to us we didn't really play it as like that big of a game as we're seeing right now right and and, and to bring up with that point it's like greg vanny has been knows what the cali classico is about he's a guy who's who's been here since the beginning knows how important this is and so yeah like yeah like you said i think greg vanny did decide to kind of instilled the importance of this game in, back into this team and you know that's good because like I've always said that you know this this rivalry is still a good rivalry. It's it's one of the oldest rivalries in MLS, and you just gotta you know b- remind people how important it is as well. So really that's a pretty does, good. It really oh. does feel like that though because like in 2019 when we played San Jose we lost twice by a combined score of six to one. Then in 2020 I think. We lost to San Jose two times and tied them once and only beat them one time out of four games. And ever since Greg Vanny took over in 2021, like I said, we beat San Jose two times to one in 2021. And we tied them 1-1 last year. And this year we go three games and beat and two out of the three are wins. So Greg Vanny, as a former Galaxy player, I think is really letting the players know and getting the team prepared for this game because he knows how important it is. And it's good to have a manager that really cares about that game again. Yeah, definitely for sure. Because I feel like, yeah, you're right. I feel like some past teams before Greg Vanny like didn't really care for it as much, especially with the whole LAFC rivalry being the the biggest rival, or like the way it's like kind of like you know the way the, the way it's been leveling up every year, right? It's like how important that game is. Like I feel like the teams before Vanny just kind of pushed that back, but now Vanny's like, no, like we got to win this game too. Like this is just as important. Like you like this is this is for bragging rights. This is for the city of LA. This is for the state of California. You got to go out and show this game. And and yeah, I agree with that too. It's like. Got to make this game important, and Greg Vanny has made it important. So I'm I'm, I'm glad for that too. But um, yeah, I, I mean overall, like I said, that was a good a uh, good win. Um, any other points before we could move on to some of the players? No. All right, let's talk about the players then. Uh, so let's go with the defense. Uh, who do we have on defense? You had Jonathan Bond on goal. You had Caligari right back. Uh, you had Yoshida and Zavaleta again as center backs, and then you had Raheem Edwards as a left back. Um, give me your thoughts on the defense. How'd you feel about the the performance? 
Yeah, so Bond came out massive with some big saves, like some little bit of time wasting at the end, and also like he had that one save on Jeremy at Bobasi where he was through and on goal. And it was kind of a one v one, not really. I think it was, yeah, it was pretty close to a one v one, and he made that really big save to keep us still in the lead at three two. And yeah, Bond came out massive. The defense overall though wasn't great. Like Edwards did get caught out of position a few times. Zavaleta got caught ball watching. I think Yoshida was pretty good. Caligari were both pretty good, but. The defense had some mistakes, but what I will say about him is in the biggest moments when the game had to be closed, the defense made the plays they needed to make. And unlike last time in San Jose, remember, we were up 2-1 to one with only 10 minutes to go in the game. And, you know, we kind of just let it slip away from us that we had that Mavinga own goal. This time we were a bit more solid defensively. We managed to get that win in the back. So it's really good that the defense was able to step up when we needed them to. But overall, through the whole game, I don't think the defense was great really on either side. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree with on everything you just said. You know, in the big moments they showed up. I think overall as a whole, wasn't that great of a performance. They led in two goals, and especially in a very short span of time too in that first half. So it's like that's not a good thing. Whenever you you let that happen, that's not that. That's just a, a big negative, right? Um, I will say some things. I don't think Raheem had a good game defensively. I think he had a better game offensively. Sometimes I think some of the combination plays he had with Jovalich was was pretty good. It ultimately led to the penalty as well. Um, so I think Edwards in that aspect, I think he was good, but defensively, yeah, like he got caught uh, caught a few times and things like that. And, you know, I think the left side of it was just kind of shaky. The right side kind of held itself together. Like you said, Yoshida was was uh, was was solid. Caligari had his moments as well. But, um, yeah, overall, I would agree as well for the defense. It wasn't that great. But in the big moments, they showed up, and that's what you need. All right. Let, I mean, oh. one more thing for the defense. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand what we were doing on that corner kick. Like, why did we let a player like Espinosa just dare him to shoot? Like, you really shouldn't do that. And we have a problem with that in the past, too, just letting our best the other team's best players have wide open shots. Like, we really need to start closing down some of these players. And also, not to mention, we play Emmanuel Reynoso still two more times this year. So it's like, we really have to learn from that quickly. Yeah, I mean, definitely yeah. for sure. You can't you can't let these 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 uh guys could just get have have their ways you know it's like you always got to look for those guys and sometimes it is hard like i mean they're star players for a reason they're good offensive players for a reason you know they know how to break down defenses and you know stuff and things like of that nature but yeah you got to keep keep an eye on those guys because those guys are going to be the ones who you know ultimately can kill you right so that's that's at the end of the day you got to take care of those guys um but anyways let's move into the midfield a little bit we had uh, we had uh, Edwin Cerillo start. We had Ricky Puj, of course. And then we also had uh, Uri Rosell. Again, same thing as we had against Chicago. Same thing for San Jose. So uh, how would you, how'd you feel about the midfield? What were your thoughts about it? Yeah, early on, I think the midfield was super dominant. They played really well. And I think as the game went on, the midfield wasn't really as good. It looks like we got a little bit tired. And then we had to make some changes to it. But early on, I think the midfield was great. And early in the second half, you had Ricky Puch step up for that great equalizer where he went into the heart of San Jose's defense and really took it in. So that was good. But... Yeah, I would say it was a good start for the midfield, but then after a while, it got pretty tired. Yeah, def definitely. And you know what? Here's the thing about that Ricky Puj goal that I will say. If I'm a San Jose fan, I would have been really, really pissed off if that's how they let Ricky Puj score. I mean, they literally did nothing. They just let him walk, like, run in. Like, it was so, it was so like, they didn't do anything. And, like, honestly, like, if that if the Galaxy did that, which I'm sure they've done that multiple times as well, um... You know, I would be really mad about that. It's like, how do you let the best player on the field just go through the middle and sh and shoot a ball? It's like, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, you don't do that. It's just, yeah, I would have been pissed off about that. Luckily, we were on the other side of it, and it was in our favor. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, we've oh. been on the other side of it a lot of times, though, like with Johnny Russell and Reynoso and stuff like that. It's like... Yeah, exactly. I mean, it. like I said, we've been on the lot of side, a uh, lot of... Uh, you know, that's happened to us multiple times as well. But, you know, luckily this time it was like for us. And uh, like you said about the midfield, I agree as well. I think they were very dominant in the beginning. But then as the game progressed, they were kind of not I don't want to say broken down. I guess you can say broken down a little bit. But, uh, you know, just yeah, ultimately in the beginning they were dominant. And then just it was more of a battle later on in the game, which, you know, that's how that game went. Um but yeah, I mean, Ricky Puj just keeps being Ricky Puj. Edwin Torrio looked really good. Uri Rossell, you know, just doing his thing, I guess. A lot of people give Uri Rossell a little bit of, like, I, I guess a little bit of, hey, I get it. I mean, he's not going to be Brugman. He's not going to be Delgado. But what you're asking him to do, it's like, it's not too bad, I guess. You know, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, overall, midfield was just, I guess, okay for me in that game. But, um. Yeah, anyways, uh, let's move into the offense. Of course, it started off with uh, Deja on up top. Uh, you had Tyler Boyd, and you had Douglas Coast in there, uh, who end ultimately ended up being uh, taken off later on in the game. But uh, how did you feel about the offense? What were your thoughts about that one? 
Yeah, so outside the penalty kick, I think Jovovic was horrible. He had a very rough game. I think he passed the ball the wrong way for the second goal. That, I think that, yeah, that led to the second goal. That was a very poor pass. And overall, he didn't get himself in good positions. He didn't really do much at all. But I think Tyler Boyd and Costa were both amazing. It's a shame Costa had to come out because he was playing really well, taking players on, getting the ball where it needs to go. Kind of what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. He's really just making those good passes, getting us out of pressure and doing all these things well. And Tyler Boyd being aggressive again, taking players on he scored the first goal he looked lively all game so i think those two had an amazing game but the striker position still remains an issue yeah and that's just been the story this um i guess you could say this season right uh or at least the second half of the season but uh yeah i mean for sure i mean tyler boyd know, the whole season actually well i mean the whole se- the first part of the season our wingers weren't doing much either but oh, now yeah, they've stepped yeah. up that's what the i'm saying like half problem has been like yeah the striker problem definitely has been an issue um wingers has has been like i guess half a season or so um but anyways yeah i agree as well uh it is a shame that douglas costa did get injured which i think yeah like he did he played very well and then once he got his shoulder dislocated it was like man like i i mean i guess once he got off it you kind of needed costa right and and also in houston which we'll talk about later but like once he's off now we kind of realized like man like costa really is an important piece to this team like as much as you know it's kind of we kind of said it too. It's like it's surprising that we're saying that now that we're saying Douglas Costa is an important piece to the galaxy. Like that that's just crazy. But once he got off, you can tell that was just kind of, I guess, where San Jose maybe got a little bit of life. Um, but but still though, it's it's like it's pretty crazy like um to think about that. And uh, yeah, Tyler Boyd did his thing. Um, Dejan got a goal, which you know I guess good for him because I felt like he did get like kind of emotional after that goal even if it was a penalty i mean sometimes you just need that one right you need that one to just feel better and considering what how what he's been through during the season and how much criticism which rightfully rightfully so right but um regardless despite all the criticism like i felt like he needed that which again i'm happy for him in that aspect but i do agree that you know it's still an issue hasn't really done as much Remember when you told me in April, though, that, like I said, we needed Douglas Costa back. The Galaxy need that player back in the winger spot. He can make some sort of difference when he's playing, at least. And you were like, oh, he's not going to make any difference. It's like, now I'm glad you came to the side of realizing that he really can make a difference when he's fit and actually motivated to play. I mean, when, I mean, it, yeah, I remember when you told me that. And it's crazy because I was just like, he's going to get suspended one day. He's going to get injured. I mean, I guess he did get injured in this one, but which was, you know, not, not on him or anything like that. I mean, injuries are never on a player, but you know what I mean? It's just like, He's going to get injured at some point. He's going to get suspended. And no, he hasn't. And that's kind of been like the the surprising part about it, how much he's turned a new leaf and how much he is an important piece to this team. And it is crazy. And you know what? I'll, you know, I'll admit it. Like Douglas Costa is an important part of this team. He's definitely shut a lot of mouths up, I guess. And, you know, he, he's doing what he's needed to do. And I think, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I can ask you this too. Like, do you think with how he's performing, it, it's, I mean... Not just collectively his time at the Galaxy, but just what we've seen, like, this good part of Costa. You can say it's worth the DP spot, right? Like, do you think about it? Uh, it's worth a DP spot right now. He's been playing at a DP level, sort of, but would I re-sign him after this season? On a DP contract, no. Would I consider bringing him back on, like, a high TAM deal? Possibly. It depends, like, who we have in mind, but... Yeah, his production has definitely been up lately, and he's been playing a lot better. I don't know if it's because of he's in a contract year, so he kind of realized, like, I need to play better in order to keep a job next year, or maybe he just saw Chicharito go down and had enough respect for the team that he wanted to pick up his level of player. Maybe it's a little bit of both of them, but yeah, Douglas Costa has been playing really well right now, and we need him on the field for this final part of the season. Yeah, we do. He is an important piece, and... You know, hopefully he's back against St. Louis. I know it was 10 days, which I think would be the 10-day mark. We'll, we'll see if he comes back against St. Louis. But, uh, yeah, hopefully he, he is. And, you know, we do need him. Like, we really do, which, again, surprising to think about that. And, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. But uh, offense, I mean, you still got three goals, I guess. Uh, you got two from offensive players. And, you know, I guess offensively, would you say it was a good – was a maybe not a good day, but at least a solid day performance for them? Yeah, I mean, when you score three goals, it's always a good day offensively, especially on the road. It has to be considered a really good day, and I think we looked lively all game, especially in the first, like, 20 minutes. I think that was might have been the first, not the first, sorry, the best 20 minutes I've seen us play all season, and it was really good. Like, I, offensively, we were moving the ball great. We were playing at a really fast pace. San Jose couldn't keep up with us at all, and we got l- unlucky not to score more than one goal in the first 20 minutes, but after that, like, it kind of died out, down a little bit, but I'm glad we got ourselves back into the game and a win. 
yeah, I mean, we were really dominant those first twenty. I think there was like there was like a little stat that popped up about how many passes completed or whatever. And I think the Galaxy had like a hundred something completed, and like San Jose had like fifteen. And it was just like, whoa, like we like we have the complete dominance in this one, this first twenty minutes. And then, you know, like it, it was crazy, like th- to see that how dominant we were. I mean, you know, it sucks that we, I guess, kind of broke down at the end of it. But um, you know, I, I don't know. I guess you you still got the fight in in there later on, but. uh you know, yeah, it, it was pretty, it was a battle for sure, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, that's the statement you want to make coming out of the game. Like, you really want to get on top of them. San Jose lost 3 0 the week before, so you really kind of want to come out and kind of punch them in the face. And I think we did a really good job of that. Yeah, we did. You always got to punch those guys in the face, right? Because that's always going to be the statement um, going into a game, right? Like, if you can punch them in the face, like early on, that might, you know, affect the team, the, the opposing team, right? And I mean, it's happened to us a lot of times this season, so it, it should be the same for other teams as well. So, uh, you know, yeah, definitely, definitely for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, again, like I said, Cali Classico, Cali Classico, good win. Um, we get the, we're undefeated in Cali Classico this season. And uh, yeah, I mean, any other points you want to take from that game or do you want to move on? Yeah, I really feel like in Cali Classico this year, it's very realistic. We could have gone 3-0 and got the sweep this year. Like, I feel like in that July 1st game in Stanford Stam, we played really well. Like, we got our best players on the ball. We were playing really good. We were connecting passes. We were moving well. And I feel like we did enough to win that game, but just mental errors costed us that game. And it was disappointing because I thought our play was more than deserving to earn a sweep in the Cali Classico this year. But I guess it didn't happen. I don't know what you think. But I feel like we could have got that one. Yeah, I felt like you we could have. Um, definitely for sure because that, that Stanford game, we I think we should have won. Like, I honestly do believe we should have won that game. And like I said, the mental errors and things like that just kind of messed us over. But also credit to San Jose as well, because like I've said, they knew what was at stake. They knew how big this game is. And it's always big for them, right? Because the fact that we are their rivals, I don't think they really have any other rival in the league, right? Like we, we can say we have LAFC as well. We have two rivals, but for them, it's just us. So they know how important it is. And, the, and I respect them in that aspect of that, you know, they just want to kick our ass, I guess, you know, I mean, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird to say that, right? Like to ha- give them respect for that. But, you know, at the same time, it's just like, you kind of have to give them the respect and the fight that they gave as well. But, you know, what? at the end of the day, I mean, I don't want to say we're the Kings of California, because it's not like we're doing great right now. But I'll just say it, we're the Kings of California. <laughs> We've won the Cali Classico in 2023. And we got the bragging rights for that. We can just leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, but anyways, yeah, good win. Uh, I guess we can move on into Houston. Um, yeah, so like I said, Houston uh, was a different story. Of course, it was at home. We ended up getting a 0-0 draw. Um, a lot of things happened in this game, and we've talked about it after the game as well, um, that the reaction to that one was 50-50. Um, a lot of people were okay with it because you didn't drop points. You got a point um, against a really good Houston team. But there was also the side of, hey, we were still playing very bad. Offense was bad. Defense was solid because they didn't score. Uh, they didn't get a goal scored on and stuff like that. So, like, but the offensive performance of that game was actually really bad. Um, so it was a very 50-50, uh, I guess, reaction to that 0-0 drop. But, again, we get one point. We share the points with Houston at home. Um, give me your thoughts about it. How would you feel about that one? Yeah, I was very disappointed about the game coming off that big Cali Classico win. I was like, I was going to that game with so much confidence. I'm like, oh, we're back at home now. We want to get the nine point week. We can creep even closer to the standings. A few points, a few teams dropped a few points this week. It's like we can get even closer to them. And it's like, we're going to be motivated against Houston to try to prove our point again because we lost 3 0 last time. And it just wasn't there really all night. I mean, offensively, nothing really happened. Defensively, we were okay, even though I think we got a bit lucky we didn't concede a goal or two. But. It just looked uninspiring. It looks like the Galaxy weren't really up for that game in a sense. It's like they're still riding the high from Wednesday in a sense. And at home, you really need to get all three points, especially if you want to make the playoffs. Like we have, what, like six home games left. You really need to try to win all your home games because we know on the road it's very difficult in MLS. And yeah, it was just pretty disappointing overall what happened. I think it wasn't really in anybody's control. It looks like it was just a poor night for the team overall. But I would have liked to see a bit more from that game. Yeah, definitely for sure. And I, and I, and I think a lot of people felt the same way, uh, the way you're feeling. And yeah, I mean, it was, I don't say it was uninspiring. I, I do agree. Maybe they did ride the high of that Cali Classico win into, uh, going up against Houston. I, I, I do agree with that. Maybe, maybe it was also just the fact that it was a mi- that you had two games and, you know, there was differences in the lineup as well. Um, you know, just think little things like that, that kind of affected 
the team maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I will say that offense just did not look great. I mean, there were, we, I don't know that we just couldn't get things going. And you're right. I think there were moments where Houston had some chances to score on us. And there was one where they had, where I don't even know how he missed, but they ended up missing one at the end of the game. I forgot who it was, but, um, but still, regardless, Houston had one really good chance to, to, to get the three points away for them. And it's just like, I mean, yeah, it was a bit of luck. It was a bit of the fact that we just weren't playing good as well. But again, like, and I agree with everybody saying that it was disappointing and it was a bad result. But I also, the other side of it is that you can't be too mad about it because of the fact that that you still don't drop too many points. You get one, you don't drop, you don't completely drop the ball. And I think you just kind of have to. And I said this to you. I think you just have kind of have to take it and just move forward. You can't let this 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 uh, game like you can't lose sleep over it. You can't just think about this game. You say, hey, it's a bad performance. We know that. Let's move on into the next one. We got a whole week to to train for the next game. So. I, I think again, it's 50, very fifty-fifty for this game, but I, I don't think any side is right. But you know, both could be right, both could be wrong. But it's just you know, it just is what it is, in my opinion. I just really got the feeling from that game, though, that if anyone was going to score the first goal, it was going to be Houston. Like I was watching the whole game, and I was like, kind of just sitting there waiting, waiting for something to change, waiting for a momentum shift, waiting for the Galaxy to create that one big opportunity. But it really just never came that whole night. Yeah. If anything, it might be a more of a disappointing night for Houston than it is for us. I it mean, because yeah. well, they're in a playoff spot right now and it's they're on the road. So probably not that disappointing for them considering they won on home midweek. But <clears throat> still, like they should be a little more disappointed. They didn't put their bigger opportunities away. Right. But I mean, I would I would also say that, yeah, they may be in a playoff spot, but we've said it before. It's very tight right now between like places three to ten, you know, so it's like they can't really afford to drop any points either. So it's like. You know, for them, it might be a bit more disappointing because I think, yeah, they had the, they had more chances. They had that one opportunity that could have sealed them the win, and they didn't get it. So, it's like, in my opinion, I think it was it was more ba- uh, worse for Houston in that sense. But I think they should be a bit more disappointed. But again, um, I don't know. I think for both sides, you can say the same thing too. It's like you just take the point, and I think you just move on. Like that. That's just how I took it. Like, you yeah, know, Houston, Houston had two really big opportunities. Like they had one in the first half where one of the Houston players played Corey Baird in on goal and Corey Baird took the shot and Jonathan Bond came up with this huge save. And if Corey Baird had passed it to his teammate who was wide open in the middle and would have been on sides, that's an easy tap in for Houston. But Baird makes the bad decision to shoot it in the second half. It wasn't at the end of the game. I think it was around like maybe might have been like 70. Yeah, I was going to say it might have been 60, 70. Yeah, 60, 70th minute around there. It's like Houston had a wide open goal where he was playing across and their player used his, I think it was his right foot to try to flick it in instead of tapping it with his left foot. And that should be an easy goal right there too. So, I mean, we could have easily lost the game too and they should be disappointed in that sense. But what was more disappointing for us is we didn't even create any opportunities. Like outside of that one Jovalich header in the first half, which was like barely a chance. And the Aguirre sort of bio sequence play that resulted just like two pretty simple saves for the keeper. It was... There's really nothing all night for us. Yeah, I mean, like I like I agree with that. Offensively, we were just not we weren't creating anything. And it was to the point where we took off Tyler Boyd, which I think I know you said you disagreed with that, but I would also like to say like the fact is we weren't creating anything and maybe you just had to take off a player like that as well to try to get something going. Just to try to get something going, but even then, not, neither the starters ne- neither the subs really got anything going and it's just I think that was just really the the disappointing part about it. Taking off Tyler Boyd was a horrible decision because you just subbed in a new striker. So who knows what he could, he could have done with Billy Sharp instead of Jovalich. And you didn't even give him that opportunity. You took him off right away. And I feel like on the night, if we're going to highlight one uh, positive offensively, I feel like it would just be Tyler Boyd being aggressive, really trying to create things. But it wasn't really there for him. It wasn't there for the team. But taking off Tyler Boyd, that was just not the move right there, especially for Daniel Gary, who's more defensive. It's almost like we were playing for the point at that point. Also, another point to add on the offense as well. Um you had no Douglas Costa, of course. Uh, Diego Fagunda starts in this game. Um, and like I said, you can tell that this team needed a Douglas Costa as well because that's another you know player who creates things, right? He's a player who creates things out of nothing and you know relieves the pressure for sometimes from the Galaxy as well. And it's just like, yeah, you needed a Douglas Costa as well. And I don't think Diego Fagunda's really provided that. I don't think he was like terrible, but it's just he wasn't providing the thing, things that Douglas Costa was. 
Yeah, Fagundes was really poor. Honestly, I think he looked a bit out of shape, and we talked about it, like, this season he's been injured a lot, still coming back from injury, not in the best of shape, and you can tell right now it's not fully up to match fitness, and it's kind of concerning, like, maybe we write it up this year, don't make much of it, but next year if he's still, like, not at his best, or he's just not in his prime anymore of his career, then, like, you're paying this player a lot of money, and he's not very good for you, that's pretty concerning. Yeah, it definitely is for sure. But again, this was his first start. Um, San Jose was his f debut, I guess, because of the Douglas Costa injury. So, like, again, can't really judge him off two games. But you know, we'll we'll see we'll see how how it goes from here on out. But yeah, I mean, for sure, it wasn't a wasn't a great day uh, starting debut um, for Diego Fagundes. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, couldn't get anything going on the on the uh, offense. Again, it sucks. I think midfield was okay. I think again, defense was. Yeah, okay, I guess as well. Like it was just a meh performance, I guess, like all 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 around. So, I mean, again, you just kind of have to just take it and move on. That's just how I felt about that game. Yeah, it really felt like all night. Like anytime we would try to do something, like okay, we got the ball wide, we cross it, it goes into the first defender. All right, we get the ball wide, we cross it, it goes straight to the keeper. We get the ball wide, we cross it, it goes over everybody's head. We're in midfield, we lose the ball, or we don't connect the pass. Or it just feels like everything was just kind of off. It felt like Houston, in a sense, was a step above us, which was disappointing to see. Yeah, it, it pretty was. But like I said, I think it probably would have been more disappointed uh, for Houston because considering I think they did play, you know. A bit better than us. I think I don't think Houston was like amazing or anything like that. I mean, but they did have their their moments and they did play a little bit better than us. But um, yeah, I mean, overall it was just yeah. I got, I don't know. It was just a meh performance. Um, any other points before we move on to players? I know we kind of just went on on players as well. But uh, got any got any other points? No. All right, then let's move on to the players. Uh, like we said, defense. Uh, you had you had some changes in this one. You had Bond at goal. You had Caligari on right back you had edwards again on the left and then you had maya yoshida and uh chris mavinga as your starting center backs on this one um again how'd you feel about the defense what were your thoughts about it honestly defense i think it's similar to how i felt versus chicago like yeah it says we got a clean sheet but i don't think that performance was really clean sheet warranted like i just feel like we didn't concede any goals because houston wasted some big opportunities like we, we talked about it earlier like the quarry bear chance where we could have passed it and the other chance in the second half where they were wide in front of goal like that could have easily been 2-0 and if the score was 2-0 we lost like would we be talking about that the defense had a good game probably not so i don't know the defense played all right they did some things well i think the center backs were both solid but not a great game defensively i think the clean sheet's a bit of an outlier that game yeah, definitely doesn't tell the whole story for sure. Um, you also had uh, what's it called? You also had Caligari who ended up getting injured in that game as well. Uh, I don't think they've mentioned what his status is or what happened exactly, but um, but still though, hopefully everything's all right. Um, it was non-contact. Luckily, he did get up and walked off, which was a very good sign, if you ask me. Um, so again, hopefully he's fine and he's ready for for uh, Sunday. But uh, uh, unless something has already happened once this episode's out. Uh, we'll, We'll know for sure but uh yeah i mean he gets injured when we ended up playing with 10 men as well at like the final moments of the game which was isn't kind that, of scary too isn't that disappointing too like we should leave a seven case of injury especially for this team it's like at this point in the season when we have like so many injuries not a very good medical staff at the moment you would think like we'd leave a spot open at the end of the game in case something like this happens because yeah for like 10 minutes or so we played a man down and we could have easily lost it at that point it's like you can never even try to make a last minute push to get a winner because you were down to 10 men yeah, I mean, but like I told you, I, I think as ironic as this sounds, you can't really, you know, predict an injury. Ironic as that sounds because we've had so many, but I, I still think it's like, well, I don't know. It, it Like, yeah, it sucks that we had to play with 10 men, but I just don't think you can predict that. Like, because injuries could happen whenever they can. They could happen in the first minute of the game. It could happen in the last minute of the game. Hell, Chicharito last year had an injury before the game even happened, if you remember that. Or I think that was like two seasons ago. I don't yeah, remember. Two years but ago, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. He that like was two months too. Like, yeah, and he missed two months. That's so, our like, right there. yeah. So you can never predict an injury. As ironic as this sounds for this season, like you can never predict it. But yeah, it's unfortunate that it, it, you know, he did get injured, and we had to play with ten men. And like I said, hopefully he's okay. I, 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 I hope he plays this Sunday. I don't know what his status is, but we'll see. Um, but anyways, that that was the defense. Unless you had any other points. Um, well, yeah, Bond was super good again. Actually, like he made that one really good save in the first half on Corey Bird's shot and. He made a good save on Hector Herrera, and I think he made another good save that I don't 
quite recall, but yeah, I think Bond was really good, and we kind of questioned him like before the League's Cup break. Remember that Vancouver game where he had like that FIFA goalkeeper kind of dive? And, <laughs> like, we were like saying, well, "What is he doing?" Well, the last two games, I really think he saved us some points. Like in San Jose, he denied a boat. We see then this game, he made some really good saves, and yeah, I think Bond's really starting to pick it up right now, and hopefully, he can continue to play well going forward. Hey, and and the most important part of the season too. So it's like that's where you need him to to really make these saves. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I agree. Bond has been playing good. Um, hopefully he continues it. I mean, especially in these next ten games because they are important. So yeah, I agree as well. I think he was probably the probably the uh, standout for the defense. I guess just because of those like saves and important uh, moments. So yeah, I would agree on that. Um, all right, then let's move on into the midfield. Uh, you did have some changes in this one as well. Uh, you had uh, Uri Russell. You had Mark Delgado starting. Uh, since he was coming off a little injury, and then you also had Ricky Pouge. Um how, How'd you feel about the? How'd you feel about the the midfield? What were your thoughts about it? Yeah, the midfield was kind of ass. Not gonna lie, one of their worst games of the season. Delgado looked super poor. He didn't look very fit enough to start, which is very concerning considering he's had six weeks off since the league's cup break. The fact that he's still not right. I have to ask questions there about the training staff and what's going on exactly. And Uri Rossell, like this is probably the only time I'm gonna say it. He was probably the best player in that midfield that day, which is surprising because we had Ricky Pooch. But and yeah, then there's Ricky Pooch, and it, it was one of his off games, one of his worser games of the season. It just wasn't quite there for them. And I'm not blaming him directly. I think. I think just overall the front unit didn't really work well together there they were not connecting passes they were not in sync really it was just not a very good team performance overall but yeah i'd probably say Uri was so surprisingly was the best player in that midfield that day yeah that, that definitely i i would agree with that and also another thing about ricky being like i guess his off day again douglas costa a big factor because of the connection with him and costa recently as well like i think that also just really affect Puj as well I, I and as much as Puj can do things by himself the, you know still though having a weapon like douglas costa and having a guy like him off the field is just going to limit ricky Puj's, you know skills and, and you, you know what he can utilize talk about ricky Puj having a lack of partner starting defensive midfield partner out his starting striker out now his starting winger out it's like damn it's like where's everybody here <laughs> yeah i mean again he's he's I mean, he's had to carry this team on his back. I mean, there, it's oh, yeah. that's how it's been this season, and it sucks. But uh, yeah, I mean, still though, having another weapon like like Douglas Costa off the off the field is probably what affected Ricky Pooch the most. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rui Russell probably yeah, I think he was the best player in that midfield. Again, Mark Delgado didn't really, you know, you know, coming off of in, like a little injury didn't look that great either. And, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, yeah, midfield was just. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Those I would moments... have start, started Sadio again, though. He looked really good, and I don't know why he got placed at the bench. I don't think he deserved that, really. Yeah, I don't think so either, but I think it was also the fact of just... And again, I don't think you would want to hear this at this point in the season, but I guess change it up a little bit. I mean, it's just like... I don't know. It's like you just you didn't want to go with the same lineup again, I guess. So it's like and especially with the double week game, I guess you kinda of had to make a little bit of changes, so I guess Sadio was just the, the one that you had to make, I guess. Um... But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I still think he would have started, should have started though. Um, any other points on the midfield? Or all right, then let's move on to the offense again. Um, offense uh, again, another change. You had Fagunda starting, like we mentioned, because of Douglas Costa. You had Tyler Boyd, and you had Dejan Jovalich. Um, we, we've already said about the offense, but again, let, what were your thoughts about the offense? How'd you feel about I mean, it? Yeah, the offense was shit. What more can I say about it? It's really <laughs> bad. I mean, Fagundas didn't look great at all. He looked like not very fit at all. Jovalich as a starter, I mean, we've had this story, talk too many times. It's just not working out. And I mean, we'll discuss it later, but maybe Jovalich's time is coming to an end. And honestly, I don't think that's a bad decision. And Tyler Boyd was all right. Like, I think Tyler Boyd was the only one trying up top to do anything. He was being aggressive, trying to get balls into the box, trying to get the ball out wide to himself and taking on players but overall just like Tyler Boyd really had nothing to work with offensively and yeah it, the offense just was not good at all and I'm pretty concerned this weekend for if Douglas Costa is not available yeah I, I'm I hope he's available I really do hope he's available for Sunday and you know even if he doesn't start if he comes in at some point of the game I think I'll be okay with that but I we need him <laughs> like as and we said it as, as well, weird as this sounds today, so I mean if that helps your case at all Oh, okay. There you go. He was at training. Yeah, because uh, they had a what's it called? They had an open training for season ticket members. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, well, that's a good thing um, for sure. Uh, but hopefully he is back for Sunday. So uh, yeah. But I agree. Offense was shit. It was ass. And I think we can really just move on from that because there's really nothing else well, you can say about. Point. I'll give it a little <laughs> shout out though. I think Michael Barrios off the bench was pretty promising though. Like honestly, like this weekend, if Costa's not available, I might want to see Barrios start because his energy and the way he took on players and his speed, I think, was really impactful that game. Even though it didn't really generate to anything. 
Mm, I, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I guess Michael Barrios would. But I think that's kind of better if you keep bring him off the bench, right? Because he does bring a little bit of that entry. Down. Like you might have to start him sometimes. Well, I, I guess so, yeah. But, you know, I, I'd still want to see, I guess, well, if Costa's not available, I would like to see Fagundes at least give it one more shot, you know, before we move on into that discussion. Yeah, I don't my know about opinion. that, but... My opinion. I, in my opinion, I think so. Um, but yeah, like we said, offense really wasn't that great anyway, so I think we could really just agree with that and move on. Um, final points, though, as a whole, just for this uh, double week game, um, you know, I, I kept the I kept the octopus as a smiling just because I, I said, you know what? Houston was a little bit disappointing, but you did get a Cali Classico win. You got four out of six points available. I think it's worth having the, the octopus in the smiling face right now. But, uh, yeah, but I mean, just a final thought. How would you feel about the week? Um, do you think, I guess, was it a successful week? Do you think it was okay? How would you feel about it? Yes, yeah, so overall for the week, Cali Classico was amazing. That was a great game. Really back and forth. A really good battle. I'm very happy we came out on top. Got the bragging rights for Cali Classico. That was an amazing result. Houston, definitely very disappointing for me. I was I had so much confidence going into that game. And coming off that big Cali Classico win, I really wanted to get three points at home. And we could have been even closer to the playoff line. But now we just have to wait another week and try to get back into things. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, Houston... Um, don't think the players are going to lose sleep about it. Um, at this point, you just got to keep moving forward, take what you can. Um, hopefully we get a, um, you know, once, well, going into, we'll talk about St. Louis in a bit, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we, we do better there. Um, okay, but let's move on. Uh, we do got some galaxy news. In fact, we got a lot of galaxy news, to be honest. Um, like I mentioned in, in the beginning, there's players that want to leave. There's players that's going to leave and there's also new additions, but not players. So, um, I guess let's just talk about the first thing that happened this week. Um, the big news, Efrain Alvarez uh, reportedly going to uh, Cholos de Tijuana. Um, it seems to be like that's a done deal and he's going to go there. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, that's going to happen. We Everybody was wondering why hasn't he been on the roster these past like three games or whatever. And, you know, you know, inevitably we just knew that this was going to happen. We were going to have to offload him, whether it was, I guess, now or the off season. This was just bound to happen, but um, yeah, he's he looks like that's a done deal. He's going to move. Um, what are your thoughts about it? How how'd you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, it's great for both the player and the club, especially for the player that like I really think Efrain Alvarez needs to change the scenery. He's been here for a while since he was like really young, and this year it's been really rough for him. I know he said like he wanted to make this his year. He started with well in preseason, but it just never quite went in his favor. I think he had sort of a fallout with the coach. He hasn't played basically the last 12, 13 games. I mean, how many minutes has he realistically played? Like under 20 minutes probably being completely honest and probably like a half if i'm gonna be even, honest honestly like i don't even know about that and yeah i just think he needs to change the scenery to try to develop somewhere else new coaches new teammates new environment that can be great for a player and i really hope he does well and i know we made jokes sometimes about like how he is but it really became kind of a sad situation that it had to end this way and yeah if the deal does happen and he does go i wish him the best of luck and i hope he does well over there yeah, I agree. Um, listen, as much as we make jokes, as much as much as we give criticism, as much as you know, just, I mean, I don't want to call us part of the media, but the media in general, as much as there's there's criticism and things like that, at the end of the day, we want players to succeed. We want them to be the best that they can be. And Efra, being this young player, when we signed them, going to be this prospect, and you know, could be the next big thing, not only for the Galaxy but also for Mexico and things like that. Just uh, Slatan calling him like the you know also the best academy player or whatever. It's just like we had high hopes for Efra. We wanted him to be the best player he can be. And again, like you said, it sucks that you know we've had to come to the point where we had to criticism and had to, I guess, make these jokes. But and it is a sad situation. But I agree that this chain of scenery is going to help him. It's going to make him more of a better player, a better adult, um, just, you know, helping him grow as, as a person. Um, you know, I, I just think that this move is, is, is right for him. And, you know, I, like you said, I wish the best, nothing but the best for him. You know, he's going to go with a, with a coach with Piojo Herrera and, you know, just, you know, you know, hopefully he just tears it up in Liga Max and gets his opportunity. And, you know, if a team, I mean, the fact that, that Tijuana wanted him goes to show that, his services are still, you know, people want his services. You know, he's had his moments here. He know we know the potential that he can get. It's just a matter of him trying to get to there. So I, I like I said, like we said, um, wish nothing but the best for Efra. Yeah. So um, yeah, that I don't know. It, it kind of got kind of got a little emotional for that, but uh, <laughs> I mean, again, though, it, it hope, we hope for the best for him. Um, okay, that was that was one uh, transfer, I guess, rumor or I guess thing that happened. There was another rumor. Um, well, actually, it was confirmed uh, that 
Dejan could have possibly been on the move. Um, apparently that he had an offer to Turkish side. I forget what the team was called. Um, I don't know if you remember the team name, if you can tell me. I know the team name, but I can't pronounce it at all. So yeah, I can't pronounce it either. Um, it's Transpor... I don't, know. I don't remember. <laughs> don't bother. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. You can re- you can check on Fab's Twitter. Um, it's yeah, on exactly. there. <laughs> it's on there. But apparently they, they made a deal, a $3 million deal to the Galaxy um, to get Dejan Jovalich. He actually accepted it, which, which also came out, but the Galaxy rejected it. Uh, another note to add on is that we did buy Dejan for, I think, 3.5. So we were going to... I guess lose a little bit of money if we did agree to this transfer. Um, and again, we talked about Dejan this season um, as a whole. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what were your thoughts about it? How did you feel about about that whole like situation? Yeah, I don't think the Galaxy rejected this deal because they would lose money because realistically 500K, especially for an AAG ownership that has a lot of money, is not that much. I think they rejected it because we're just short on bodies right now. We have Chicharito out already. We have... Brugman out already, we have Casadas out, now we have Costa out, we might have more players out. It's like we already have so many guys out, we can't afford to lose another body for the rest of the season and we just have to keep him here. But the fact that Jovalich accepted that deal tells me that it's probably done. I mean, if he accepted it, that means he probably wants to move, he probably wants to leave. We heard reports that like maybe he was not happy about a new striker bringing Brun in and maybe he feels like he's not as prioritized anymore. And obviously with a DP contract this off season, I think a striker is the top priority on our list and that would just limit Dan's playing time even more. And yeah, I mean, it's honestly, it's coming to an end with Dan Jovic. I don't think he's a great fit at this club. I think he's a good player, but just at the system with the way we want to play, I don't think he's the player for our system. And I mean, if he does end up making the move eventually, I wish him all the best. I don't think he'll be right now, but I do have a strong feeling by next preseason, he will not be on this roster anymore. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the writing's on the wall, especially him accepting that offer, right? Um, I, I will say for in for Dejan's sake, it's like, if the if the reason is because they brought in Billy Sharp, which I don't think it's necessarily on Billy Sharp, right? It's the fact that they brought another striker. Um I don't think that should dishearten Jovalich. That should motivate him, because the fact is, it's that yeah, you you we if we if I'm pretty sure Dejan knows this isn't a good season for him. It's not a good season for him. He knows that. Um, you can't let things like that go down to you again. If that's the reason, but um, I I mean still though, but yeah, I mean I think it's just the fact of what the off season is going to look like as well. I mean, like you said, there's so many. And I think that's going to be the like the topic of conversation is the striker position for this off season, right? There's so many different things the Galaxy can do, right? It's like they. I think everybody wants to see the big name DP striker, which is obviously going to. I feel like that should happen, but you know that's an option. The option could be, you know, again, I guess Chicharito. Uh, another n- little news, I guess you could say Chicharito on Twitch the other week was like he wants to retire here. Don't really believe it, but again, he says that he wants to retire here. Does the Galaxy bring him back? What happens with Billy Sharp in these next 10 games? You never know. It's like there's so many different directions the Galaxy can take with the striker position. And I, I know that everyone's going to say, no, get the DP um, new guy, you know, like get the star player, which I agree as well. But it's like there's so many different directions you can do. You you can still keep Dejan. What happens with Judd? It's like there's just so many things that you can do with that position. And But again, I, I would say I would agree as well that I'm, I'm – I'm confident to say that I don't think Dejan is going to be on this team uh, next preseason. Yeah, I feel like with Jovic, though, like, if he really wants to leave right now, I think the Turkish window closes on September 15th, and right now it's the 6th. Like, the question should be, like, do we let him go right now? Like, realistically, if, like, he doesn't want to be here, it's like, we don't want him starting anymore. Like, we've already just talked about him as a starter enough times to the point where it's not good anymore. And then on top of that, it's like he already knows he's probably gone the offseason. Do you just let him go a little bit early and just rock with Yovel? I'm not sorry, uh, Billy Sharp and Preston Judd the rest of the year? Do you just like ride them out the rest of the year and let Yovel go a little early, make your offseason a little easier? Or do you keep him the rest of the year because you do have the lack of players problem? Because honestly, in my opinion, like, I think we should let Jovalich go right now if he really does want that move and the offer is good enough. I, I think we should let him go right now because I just don't see him being motivated to stay here any longer. Yeah, I mean, I, I which is kind of hard to think about because I think Jovalich has always been those guys who's been motivated. I mean, he's the guy who, ever since he came here, is like, I'm going to be the future. I'm going to be the guy. And it's like, it sucks because he's not, right now he hasn't been doing good. And I think his, you know, his motivation kind of has gone down a little bit too. But um but still, though, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think that's a big decision the Galaxy is going to make, whether they do it now or the off season. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, again, if he does move, I mean, we wish him for the best of luck. But for right now, 
he's a Galaxy player, and I guess we got to hope for the best and see if he picks it up. What do you personally think? Do you think they'll move um, in the next week or the off season? I think it's going to be an off season thing. I don't think they do it now. If they do do it now, I think that's more surprising than than it is in the off season. Honestly, like for me, it wouldn't be surprising if they did it now because like you really got to take into account if he doesn't want to be here and he's been struggling so much in the starting lineup anyways. It's like you'd probably just let him go a little bit early and just not delay the inevitable. Really, for me, it kind of makes sense to do it right now if, but, if the offer comes across. But but the thing is though, it's like. You still don't know what Billy Sharp is. You never, you haven't seen him start yet. You still have Preston Judd in there. I don't think he's going to start, but still, though, you don't know what if they manage to put Judd in there. And then what if they put Dejan on the bench and then he ends up being what he was? You know, like you never know. Like Dejan is still a very valuable player. He still we has assets the, to. We tried him on the bench this year and he hasn't quite worked out though. To be fair, but I, I think that the last year thing. Yeah, but I mean, still though, it's like there's been more instances where he started than he's come off the bench. So it's like, I, I think that that that's a. Uh, you know, something they had the Galaxy still need to think about. It's like, you know, this is still an effective player coming off the bench. So it's like, you know, I don't know. It, it is it is an interesting decision, though. I But for me, I don't think it's going to happen in, in, like now. It's going to happen in the offseason. It is strange that, like, if we had that U22 DP spot, what would we do with it? Would we get another striker, a winger, maybe a midfielder? Like, that would be kind of strange. A defender, which I highly doubt a defender, considering our defense is already really young. But, yeah, that would be really strange. Like, could we find a better player to fit our system more? that Jovovich hasn't been able to do in his time here, especially as a starter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be interesting because, I mean, that U21 spot or U22 spot is really... Uh, it's valuable. It's valuable, yeah. It's a very valuable piece to, to the whole, like, salary cap situation, right? So it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it really would be interesting, but I think, again, that's still a conversation for the off season and what, what happens there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, um, I don't know. That we Like I said, hopefully Dejan turns it around, but, I mean... You know, it seems like the, the, the writing's on the wall. It's just, it's going to happen. Yeah. But um, anyways, that's enough of the transfer uh, stuff, player stuff, actually, because we still have one more uh, piece of Galaxy news. Um, Galaxy announced actually three um, personnel for the front office. Um, uh, this this whole, like, uh, revealing, I guess, was just more on the business side of the things. So you got, uh, let me just read out the names. Uh, you got Tom Braun, who's now the president of the business operations and chief operating officer. You got Uriel Martinez, who's chief revenue officer. And then you got Will Misselbrook, who is chief creative and brand officer. So you got these three guys coming in, um, part of the front office now. Nothing nothing related to soccer operations. That's still going to be under Vanny and, and Will Kuntz. So these are guys who are just going to focus mainly on the business is from what I understand. Um, again, these are, these are new pieces to the front office and, um, yeah, I mean, what, what are your thoughts about it? How did you feel about when the galaxy announced this? Yeah, definitely a lot of questions though, for sure. Like who's the first guy you named off, but he's the uh, president. Tom Braun, he's the president of business operations and chief operating officer. So is he taking Chris Klein's spot or? I think from what I, from what I understand it, I feel like I, I cause we always have this conversation with Chris Klein where it's like, I think Chris Klein, when he was here, it's like, he should have not focus on the soccer part and then be big on the whole marketing thing. That's what I is what I'm thinking that they're doing. This guy is essentially part of the whole business aspect, mar, like not the, it's directly marketing, but like the marketing stuff and everything like that. It's like this is the this is what Klein should have been. Is from what I understand. And I heard he's more experienced too. Like I saw like in the Galaxy comment section, like he has business experience at USC and he has so much more like credit to him. Like a lot more. Just how do I, what's the word I'm looking for? Just more credit. I don't know what a better word to use. Uh, credentials? Yeah, exactly. Credentials. Like, he has more... He's a more respected businessman. He has more experience. He has higher ratings, I guess, is what you could say. And he seems like a really good hire. I don't really know much about him. I don't really know much about that side of the front office. To be honest, I don't really care that much. I care more about on the field and how we can get good players in here and build a good team. But, I mean, it's great to have an organization where everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone's on the same page. And hopefully these guys can make a good impact on our organization. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, Tom Braun actually w has been a part of the Galaxy organization for quite some time. I think it's been like, I think he's been here for like 10 years or something like that. It was like uh, 15 I read, I think. Yeah, some, yeah, something like that. So almost 10 years. Um, still though, he's been here with the Galaxy. I forget what his role before this was, but um, essentially Tom Braun has done a lot of things with the Galaxy. Um, he was the guy, actually one thing he, he created was the whole Coachella Valley Invitational, right? The preseason like tournament thing that they have. Uh, he was a part of, he was the guy who led that. Uh, I think he has some things with the soccer champions tour, which is all, when all the European teams come here um, for their preseason. Um, I think he was also in charge of, you know, getting galaxy two to be a thing 
you know, for them to compete in USL and then transition them to MLS Next Pro. So, like, Tom Brown has done a lot of things. He's been with the organization for a very long time. So hiring someone within your organization is a good thing because now they have not only have they know what the how the galaxy operates but also he has his own ideas that he can offer so it's like there's a lot of things that he can do um again nothing really with the soccer operation stuff um which again i think for us that's what we care about the most but i mean through the business side of it i mean it's you know i think it's a good hire i think he has like i said he has the credentials to do what he what be in this role and do what he what he wants to do. Same with the other guys as well. Um, don't really know much about Real Martinez. I know Will Misselbrook was the guy who, um, uh, what's it called? He was in charge or at least a part of the whole Commanders rebrand from the NFL, which, you know, a lot of people may not like that whole rebrand in general. So it's like, maybe you can say like, maybe that wasn't a good hire, but still though, he was a part of a whole rebrand, whole part of a whole like a uh, social media thing and try to create a brand for, for that, for the Washington uh, commanders and stuff like that so that he was a part of that um which is interesting as well so i mean again i think that all of this is good on the business side of, of the thing and again um i think my main point is that like it's a good thing that you're separating the business and the and the soccer away from each other let them be their own thing and let them do their own thing you know what i mean so who is who is soccer operations exactly like that's not really clear to me i know it's great Benny has a big part of it but anybody else like kind of working with him because he can't really coach the team and like do all this at the same time well uh, well i mean obviously he is the coach and obviously he's going to be the sporting director of course will Kuntz is his role is going to be i'm just is part of soccer operations karofsky's role is going to be op- uh, part of soccer operations and Karofsky's stuff like that kind of shit though isn't he like i've heard bad things about him uh well karofsky right now now is in charge of scouting from what i remember oh, no. um uh, or part <laughs> no. of the scouting department i remember because the whole you know when acb had their meeting and they were talking about everything like that and that in fact will misselbrook has been I actually been here since the beginning because they mentioned him um in that acb meeting like in the beginning of the season but um still though like again uh Karofsky is part of soccer operations because he's part of the scouting and things like that of, of that nature um so yeah, I mean, I, that's soccer operation. It's going to be Vanny, Kuntz, and Karofsky from what I know. I don't know anybody else who's part of it. So what's Dan Beckerman's role? Like, I know he's a CEO of AEG, but like, uh, it's kind of confusing, like, all these guys. I need to learn more about it. So what's his role exactly? Because I know he's kind of a face of the LA Galaxy a little bit. Well, I mean, Dan Beckerman is just... I guess he just oversees the Galaxy. Not really a guy who's going to make decisions for the Galaxy. He's just more like oversees on who, they hi- who he hires and who they bring in, which is essentially... Dan Beckerman hired all those three guys, right? He hired them to, for the Galaxy. Um, and then, you know, of course, when they hired Will Koontz, I'm assuming that was his decision as well. You know, bringing, per, bringing the people in is his job, is from what I understand, at least. Could be I, wrong, though. I feel like in soccer operations, though, there has to be more than three people. Like, it's not just those three guys, I'm assuming, right? I, I mean, I think the what, what people have been saying, what felt about the whole soccer operations part of it is that, you know, they don't like Vanny being the sporting director. So I think really it's just... You know, and we've had this discussion too. It's like, um, like, should the Galaxy bring a sporting director or slash GM for the next season? So, like, as of right now, soccer operations is going to be Vanny Kuntz and Karofsky. But the, I guess the conversation for next year is going to be: Do you bring somebody in, or do you keep it the way it is? That they that's should, how I look. But at I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to stick with Vanny because he's done yeah. that in Toronto too, and he went in trouble with that team. The only MLS coach to ever do that. So I think he's kind of earned the respect to build his own team without a sporting director, but. I just think in general, a sporting director is a really good idea to have part of any organization. And you can still work with the coach, too. It's not like they're just not involved anymore if we bring one. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But, again, from the main point that I want to take from the whole hirings is that you separate the business and you separate the soccer. And I think that's what everybody's been wanting. And I think everybody's going to be happy uh, with that whole thing. So, um, but, yeah, that, that, that's just the hirings. Um but yeah, I think that's going to be the it for Galaxy News, unless you had any other points or anything like that. Yeah, I think Jovan Karofsky is like one of the low points of scouting. Like, I, I don't really know much about him, but I heard he's kind of like not very good at his job. Like maybe not climb level bad, but he has not done a good job in the past. Yeah, people have been calling for Karofsky's head as well. So, I mean, I don't know. Like it, with the whole post Klein era, maybe he's different or maybe he just is also another piece we need to let go. But I don't know. Um, it's interesting um, that he's in charge of scouting. A lot of people, when they heard of that, were not really happy about it. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how, how all that goes as well. But um, yeah, uh, that's going to be it for Galaxy News. And finally, uh, we got our uh, preview for St. Louis. So, um, yeah, this Sunday we're going to go up against St. Louis at home. They are still the first place team in the Western Conference, I believe, right? 
I don't think they've gotten down. Yeah, so they're still first place. Um, again, last time we played them, we tied at St. Louis. It was a 1-1 game. We ended up getting a last-minute equalizer. And, yeah, I mean, of course, St. Louis is an expansion team who's done very, very good this season. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be another tough battle. I mean, again, they're the first-place team in the Western Conference. So, yeah, going to be another tough battle at home. And, um, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts going into this game on Sunday? Yeah, it's going to be a very tough game. Like you said, St. Louis has been a very good side this year. We talked about before, St. Louis is a very organized team. They're very tactically good. They know what they're doing. They have players that fit their system very well. And it's going to be a tough game, man. I'm pretty concerned because, to be honest, like I don't think Costa's going to play. We heard the timeline 10 days to two weeks. And on the game on Sunday, it's only going to be 11 days. So like, are we really getting the best case scenario with Costa getting him back right away? And even if we do, he's not going to start probably. So like in my opinion, that best case scenario, we're getting Douglas Costa off the bench. And yeah, so for most of the game, I think we're going to be playing without him. And do we have the attacking quality to really threaten this very good, organized, strong St. Louis side? And Honestly, for me, it's no, really. I don't think we have the attacking quality to really threaten these guys. And I'm pretty worried about it because at home, I really think we need to get three points from this game because we're at home and then we got some road games coming up, especially next week. We've got a rivalry game on the road, I believe. And I feel like this is a game we really need to win just to get back into things even more. But without Douglas Costa, with the, with the offense I saw last game, I can't really feel too confident about it. But I do think last time we played St. Louis, we did deserve to possibly win. And if we can try to replicate that, maybe at home it'll go a little better. But I don't know. Offensively, it's definitely concerning. Yeah, definitely for sure. Douglas Costa is going to be, again, big piece that we're going to miss uh, this week. And uh, I don't know what happens this week. Uh, honestly, I don't know if they change back into, uh, you know, what they did with uh, San Jose and Chicago. Maybe you bring Cerillo again starting. Um, what What is Neil's situation going to look like? I remember he was also recovering. I don't remember when he'll be back. But, of course, like, if Neil comes back on this game. Actually, I think they were supposed to integrate him for this week. So maybe he comes back. Um, do you do you look at that in the defense as well? So, again, F Fagunda is most likely going to start in this game. So it's just like there's going to be some differences. There's going to be some things that are going to be placed that worked well with us. So it's like, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be an easy game. And I think, you know, you know, I, I don't know if we don't – I don't want to say that we don't have the offense to, to take on St. Louis, but – I don't know. It's just, it's going to be tough for sure. Cause I, I, I don't know. It, it's just like, I, I mean, I don't know. I can't really explain it to be honest. It's just, it's just going to be a tough I mean, game. I, I don't like the way to explain it is like, uh, if we're being honest, like, no, we don't have the offense to take on St. Louis. St. Louis is a very organized side. They're very good at what they do. And it's like, they're going to be hard to break down in Houston. We couldn't score on Houston, not to mention Houston's backup keeper, who's known to be really bad. It's like, how are you going to score on this St. Louis team that has very good coaching, very good tactics, and a very good keeper in Roman Berkey, and just great defenders overall? It's like, if we couldn't really score on Houston, what makes me confident we're going to score this game? And I don't know, we need our attack to step up a lot, and I'd probably change some things with it, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's another thing, too. It's like, do you keep Jovalich on the starter? Do you, do you finally bring in Billy Sharp to be the starter? I mean, there's a lot of questions to really be asked on what the Galaxy are, how the Galaxy are going to go into that game. But, um, no, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, St. Louis is going to be a tough team to break down regardless. But, again, the positive is that you're at home, you're in front of your fans, and, you know, that's going to help you, uh, hopefully. I mean, it kind of didn't really I – mean, I don't want to say it didn't help in Houston, but, like, you know, still, though, it's like – be at home is just going to be better for the for the team so it's like yeah i mean the, having that is going to help them and uh yeah i mean i don't know I, I i think offense yeah could be a be could be a big question mark going into that game but if defensive play is solid if if um what's it called Caligari is, is still is okay to be going on that one too it's like again i don't know it really is the way how the galaxy approach this game i think that's going to be the biggest factor Honestly, I'd probably change things offensively this game just to shake it up a little bit. I would probably start Billy Sharp up top, and I'd start Michael Bartos on the right and Tyler Boyd on the left. Like, if Costa's not available, I'd, I'd probably play like that because the goodness didn't look fit at all and start a Jovalich. We've already discussed that plenty of times, how that goes. Yeah, but I mean, if your argument is that he's not fit, I mean, the only way to get fit is to play, right? So, I mean, again, that's why I say give him this game. Um you know, see what he does, and, and if he doesn't look good, then you start to consider what your options are, if you don't have Costa, of course. Um, but, yeah, that that's only my thing about Fagundes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I don't know how the Galaxy approached this. Of course, they're going to want to win this game. They're going to need to get the three points. And, uh, you know, coming off a whole week of, of not – a uh, whole week, I guess, to prepare, you know, that's a good thing for them. They're going to look – they're going to, you know, 
be fresh, I guess, going into that game. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, yeah, we won't have Edwards available because of yellow card accumulation. And if Ricky Pooch gets a yellow card this game, he misses LAFC away next week. We cannot have that at all. So, I mean, the, Ricky Pooch has to be very careful this game. And Julian Alde has to step up. Yeah, I didn't even know about the whole Raheem Edwards yellow card accumulation, yeah, to be I, honest. I believe he's out, yeah. I believe that's the case. Uh, sheesh. Uh, well, there you go. Now you get Alde in the defense, so they, which is something you've been asking for. So who knows? Maybe Alde balls out too in this game. I'm like 90% sure that's the case. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure Edwards is on yellow card accumulation right now, and he's not going to be available next game. Okay, then. Well, well, I'll make sure to, to look that up as well, but, you know, regardless, if Alde starts, you know, I think that's that's a good thing, and you wanted that too, so, like, I, do, yeah, I think... I do want that. Yeah, so... Yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't have any other points for St. Louis unless you had any other ones. No? All right, then. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for the episode, I guess, then. Uh, can't thank you guys enough for listening and watching. If you want to follow us on social media, follow me at Entire Galaxy, wherever social media platform. Go follow the Galaxy Central on Instagram. And um, yeah, I mean, any other thoughts you want to say or anything you want to say to the, to the listeners before we go? No, I mean, we've had a whole week to prepare for this game this weekend, and hopefully our offense plays better, and hopefully we get three points at home. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, like we always say, we can only hope for the best. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we get those three points. But, yeah, can't thank you guys enough. Be a friend, tell a friend about the podcast, whenever or wherever you're listening to this podcast. Hopefully you all have a great day, great week, great night, whatever. Um, thank you, guys. Um, hopefully that hippo, that hippo, that octopus is still smiling um, in the background, and he's not, uh, you know, frowning the um, after Sunday. So we'll see. Anyways, thank you guys and uh, G's up. Seven words.